Hello. In a previous video, we created this simple river valley terrain and then turned it into a slightly sandstony uh, environment. So with this terrain, uh, you know, everything looks nice. So it now it needs a texture map. So we're going to create a texture map for this. So first off, um, uh, we create masks and data maps. Those are the things that will be fed to a color generator. And the, the, way, the way it works is, uh, let's do something with a simple thing like slope. I'm going to attach a uh, slope to the erosion node. And let's see, that is the slope data that I'm getting. So uh, I wanted to target like a little uh, um, slightly steeper areas of the slope. So like this, that looks good. I'll play with the fall off just to make it smooth. Uh, but we don't want smooth for this specific thing. And um, this now can be fed to a color generator and it'll use this map to create coloration. Now, uh, let's use a sat maps node. The sat maps node contains hundreds of pre-built uh, gradient maps that were created from actual satellite data. So they will give you realistic coloration for many different kinds of environments. I'm just gonna randomly go and look for something brownish. So maybe this or this. And you can see that mask is being used to create um, colors using this gradient. So I think something softer like this would do. Uh, now there is no 3D here, as you can notice. So to get the 3D view in color maps, which are flat by default, you take the terrain that you want to use for visualization, right click and click pin for color. And then go back to your sat map node and you can see we now are able to visualize this in 3D. So with this in place, let's see what other color maps will give us. So this is nice. This is nice. I like the little bit of vegetation here, but we can do that separately. Um, I like creating color maps that have different components controlling different things rather than just putting everything in one. So let's scroll up a bit and I'm gonna still keep looking for something that's a bit more sandstony. And I think something in this range will work. Now you can also reverse the gradient you can also introduce a bit of noise to it. And uh, you can always uh, combine a few different gradients, which I think would work well for this. So I'm just gonna, this looks nice. And I'm just gonna try it reversed. Nope, looks nice like this. I'm gonna right click and undo the noise. There we go. So that's one, I'm gonna put that aside. And I'm gonna create another one. So another sat map for the slope. And this time we can pick a slightly different gradient. So we were somewhere here. And let's pick this one. So that and that. So I'm going to take the two, um, select them together using control, or you can just do a, a selection. And you can just use multi-mix, uh, which is a command here, instead of uh, manually combining them. Now colors will use mixer, uh, which is the combine for color maps. And so now we're blending the two together here to get a slightly more delicate shade. So that's one component done right here, that's slope. Now we wanna have a bit more um, soil structure to the color map. And to do that, instead of using a simple selector like slope, which gives us basic data, we're gonna use a more complex data map. And data maps are a new thing in, uh, in terrain design itself and so with Gaia you get these data maps which calculate lots of complex things that otherwise uh, would have to be calculated using something like erosion and here you can do it after the fact at any point in your graph so I'm gonna take uh, the soil map attach it to the erosion node just like we did with slope and you can see it's giving us a little soil flow map and I want to take this to the extreme so I'm just gonna go right click and go twice uh, the value. And I'm also gonna choose graded so we get better slope coverage. And for some heavy nodes, it won't auto calculate. So you can hit apply. And there you can see now we have better coverage of the whole um, slope. And just like we did before, I'm just gonna um, attach another sat map, which is a bit easier than having to create your own color map. But you can do that using the clutter node here if you want it. So again, let's go and find something from our previous range. 
So these maps will you can you can see it has uh, more features in it because unlike the slope map which was just this much this has a lot more detail in the soil itself so let's pick something that would work for the soil maybe this would work in reverse there you go that looks nice and if you want a bit of um, randomness you can do this just create uh, another uh, sat map for the soil I'm just gonna move that on here so that's fine and then this new one uh, let's give it another color map this is slightly different in tone, but still fits within the same family, so to speak. And we'll combine the two, just like we did before. And F8 is the shortcut for multi-mix if you have multiple things selected. But this time, instead of just uh, simply blending it together equally, we're just going to create a mask. So in the selectors, I'm going to create a mask, attach it to the uh, well, erosion node for now, just because we get a preview. Uh, the input is only for preview purposes. And when I edit the mask, I can see the whole map in 2D. And I just want to create uh, a few different general areas. I'm going to try to mimic the flow a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. And that should be enough. And that has now masked out this area. Next, I'm going to go up and find the blur node. And I'm going to blur this mask out. So I'm going to use maximum power. And what the heck, we'll have a very large sigma, which is the spread for the blur. So this, which I'll now switch to a mask display, will become the mask input for the mixer. So here, as soon as I plug in the mask, and I switch the blur ratio to maximum, you can see the masked out areas are getting a bit of the lighter color from the other sat map. And so this way you get a bit more control over the color blending. And you can plug in any different thing that you want in the mask input. So there we go, now we have this basic soil map. And we also have this. So you can go ahead and connect these two as well, or blend these two as well. Again, I'm using multi-mix. And you can see we now have a slightly more sophisticated texture with all of these different items blending together. I want to change this and go for the min mode, or sorry, the max mode, just to check. And using different modes, you can get, just like blend modes in Photoshop, you can get different levels of mixing with the two different uh, uh, elements coming in. So this is good, and we still want some of this. So once you mix it, I'm gonna mix it again, and this time we'll go for the, uh, let's see, I'm gonna try a few different things. Let's try multiply. So multiply is good. It's now giving us that rich um, sandstone-y look that we like. It's a bit dark, but otherwise I think it's, it's really nice. Uh, there are some smoother areas here and to avoid that, you can easily go in and let's find the map that's creating this. It's this one. I'm gonna add jitter and it starts breaking things up if this, if the gradient is too smooth, which can happen with certain uh, uh, color maps. And it's a very, um, you know, uh, contextual thing. Uh, it'll always depend on what mask you're using. So anyways, with this in place, uh, we just need to brighten up. And so to brighten that, I'm just gonna add a color effects node and let's apply a bit of brightness and a tiny bit of contrast and a bit more brightness. And there you go. We kind of have a, a decent looking terrain and we were able to get here very quickly and very simply so when you add more things uh, you'll be able to get even more complex terrains and just imagine if this is what you can do with just a handful of nodes to create the actual terrain what you could create with a really nice well thought out and well planned graph